Welcome, family of God. It's Pastor Detina Hurd of Meditating Life Center Ministry in Louisville, Kentucky, with your Sunday service for Sunday, January 14th. See, it's easy to remember with those 7777, right? January 14th, 2024. Remember, we have all these lessons on Facebook Pastor Detina, Meditating Life Center, Minister Detina, Detina Hampton Hurd. You hear my name in almost all of them to keep it simple. Um, then we have Foundational Bible Study Group, and we also have um, the YouTube channel, which is Minister Detina with small m. Please like, share, follow, subscribe. Remember, what's our little saying right now? They may not listen to you or me, but they may go off on their own and listen to these lessons. So play them on your smart TV, play them on your um, smart radios and things like that in the presence of your unsaved loved ones or your, ones, your loved ones, or even to encourage yourself, of course, YouTube and Facebook, um, that you can catch up on them. And then there's a lesson about almost everything that's in that Bible at this point. Um, and the Lord's still teaching and still leading and still guiding. And I will always be referring back to those. The name of our sermon today is going to be part two. So make sure you go back and look at part one. And I was looking at some things in the scripture from last week, and I wanted to go a little deeper. So that's what we're calling it is how to or how we love our enemies and this is part two, going a little deeper with it, because I just don't want people to be mistaken or have the wrong understanding. It's like, it's just like God said, just go a little bit deeper with that um, explanation on how to love the you know people that may not be so good for us, or people who are even are adversarial towards us, but we still have to love. I think it's just in a series of God just teaching his people what love really is and how to love. And the difference between maybe your relationships with people, your closeness and what you trust them with, with your heart or with your belongings or things like that, or your pearls, right? Don't throw your pearls before swine. And then the love that you have, wanting the best for them, you know, whatever that best might look like. So that's what we're talking about. It'll probably be like a little stream going through almost everything that we, we will be teaching in the future. That's the way God usually does it with me. And the scripture... It's going to be Romans 12 added to the Matthew 25 and 26 from last week. We're not going to read all of it, but we're going to make some points out of that. And then we're going to end uh, Happy Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, holiday weekend, you know, justice weekend. Find something to do that helps promote justice. Even if you look within yourself, be honest with our self-examination to look at where we're falling short in the way we treat other people, the way we treat each other, the fairness and the justice, the way we treat ourselves. Right, the truths and lies that we tell. But we're going to be talking about how we love our enemies. And as you get your Bibles or your devices ready, I'm going to listen a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, God, for another day that you have made. Lord, we're rejoicing and we're glad about it, Lord, in our aches, in our pains, in our emotional distress, in anything that's going on in our lives, Lord, and evildoers, Lord, and people that just don't listen, Lord, and people who are set against us, Lord. Uh, who are the devil's kids, God, or the imps, anything, Lord. We know that you are with us, you are for us, you are good, you are holy, you are righteous, you win. Thank you, God. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for being with us, Lord. Arming us with mighty, mighty armor of God uh, to be battle ready day by day with these fiery darts shooting at us, God. And thank God we can say we haven't even done anything to deserve them. Lord, so we just thank you, Lord, and where we're falling short, forgive us and clean us up, God. We give you permission. Right now, we give ourselves wholly to you, Lord, the sacrifice, Lord, uh, as you're a slave. Not slave to sin, but slave to you, Lord, and just clean us up. And no, we said we're no longer slaves. We're real brothers and sisters. So thank you, Jesus, for correcting that, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for being your children today, God. Just, we just want your love, and we just want your mercy, and we just want your kindness, and we just want all of you, God, to just fill us up. So please fill us up, Lord, and touch those who are lacking. Touch us all in any area where we're lacking or falling short, Lord. And just lift up the heads of those who are having their heads down today. If they're in their sins, Lord, let this be the day of salvation when reality and enlightenment comes into their minds and hearts and souls and bodies. And they put you first and come to you, Lord, and take you up on your offer of salvation and eternal life. Lord, and for the lost, Lord. Just show them the way. And, Lord, for those who are just struggling, Lord, just remind them that they have your power by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send them to your word, God. Send your people to each other, Lord, to give them the comfort that you have given us, God. 
Lord, just have your way in this lesson, Lord. Let it, let it not be taken out of context, Lord. You know, help us to understand that you don't want us to be victimized, Lord, but we are victors and that we stand strong in you, God. And so we're able to stand strong in the face of the enemy and to still love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So today we're going to start a little bit different. Normally we would start with, uh, with, um, that's my magic on my, usually we start with Galatians 6, 9. I'm going to come back to that. But I want to start a little bit different because it's the, the King holiday. And sometimes people seem like, I hear a lot of people go like, when people, and I hate saying like, like, but when, uh, let me slow myself down. When people are talking about the Bible, they tend to say that the things that they are being taught or being admonished about are things that are being made up in order to condemn them. But we know that Jesus... He's coming back, you know, to judge. But he, when he came the first time, he didn't come to condemn the world. We don't condemn the world. It's our sins that convict us and our shortcomings that should convict us. And we should be glad about it when we feel bad about doing wrong. Because what, what should it push us to do to change it and to be better? So that's a good thing. Because the person who has guard their conscience to the point they don't even feel bad about what they do, they're probably pretty lost. And so today, like last week, I think it was when I, we went over the communion verse, right? What they call the communion verse in Matthew and I showed you where Jesus uh, actually said those words, right? So when people say those verses, you're going to be thinking, oh, if you would just say the communion verse, you know, um, on the night Jesus, you know, he took bread and broke it. No, he took bread and broke it, right? He did that. So it helps you have more confidence in what you're being taught. And today we're going to go over the Ten Commandments. Although we have a Sabbath rest in Jesus and we technically don't have to put a day aside, we put days and time aside to abide in Christ and to commune with God. Some people still observe the seventh day, which is a Saturday, whatever way you need to rest in Jesus. Hopefully you rest in Jesus every day. You rest with God every day. I'm going to have Brother Tom. I gave him three versions. He's hollering at me because we chose to go somewhere. But, hey, you know, I tell you everything that he said. So he'll stop doing it right at Jesus calling out everybody. And so I said, I want you to read three versions because people act like, because sometimes it's difficult to understand and I promised him I get I, I, we gonna get this done, so he won't be like I don't know putting up the cross to me. <laughs> he doesn't do that, but I said if you read, we'll be out of here. So I wanted to read three verses of the Ten Commandments, so you know that those are really commandments. So when people say them, even if they paraphrase them, God said these words. All right, go ahead, brother Tom. What's the what's the does it tell you where they are? Exodus. Oh, they're in Exodus. Okay, go ahead. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself any graven image. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. That's one version. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself idols and worship them. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not cover covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. And that's another version. Love it's the God children's more. Version. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's the children's version. Love God more than anything else. Don't make anything more important than God. Always say God's name with love and respect. Honor the Lord by resting on the seventh day of the week. Love and respect your mom and dad. Never hurt anyone. Always be faithful to your husband or wife. Don't take anything that isn't yours. Always tell the truth. Be happy with what you have. Don't wish for other people's things. Now see how clear that I is. I like that one. All right, that's, that's very clear. By the time you pray. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity once again to gather together to rightly divide your word. Iron sharpening iron. 
We pray, Lord, that this message will be a blessing to all those who hear it and understand it and take it to heart. In Jesus' blessed and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so when our, our, I'm going to refer back to Galatians 6 now when I'm preaching today. But we're meditating on God's word, communing with God, and abiding with Jesus. And we know that no, there should never be Christians hurting another Christian because love does no harm to its neighbor. You don't do anything that God, all of those things that Brother Tom read. And Jesus said, hey, if you love God more than anything, and if you love people, then you wouldn't hurt them. You wouldn't do things that you know hurt other people. That's a sign that we are his is if we show love for one another. All right, um, that's how you know if you're God's child or not. Our congregational song today is Can't Nobody Do Me Like Jesus. Um, and it's one of the, Brother Tom's favorite songs. I didn't give him the words he had on, but hopefully we'll, we'll just throw these verses in here because it's familiar. Teach them to your children. If they're going to be bouncing around singing, they go like, can't nobody do me like Jesus. And you rather they sing that than to bend over and twerk. And I'm not going to even go into some of the things because it'll move some of y'all to go listen <laughs> to those other songs. I'm not going to give you examples of, but I'm sure you understand that, you know, it, it would be great to see your little kid bouncing around. So that as you teach them, they'll know who they're singing about. So that's so today's song is "Can't Nobody Do Me Like Jesus." Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my Like Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Well, he healed my body and told me to run on. Healed my body. Told me to run on well, he healed my body. And he told me to run on, he's my friend. Well, he picked me up and he turned me around, picked me up and he turned me around. Well, he picked me up. Turn me around, he's my friend. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody love me like Jesus. Can't nobody love me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. He Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Good job. Amen. Good job. That's right. Because that's what we're talking about is loving our enemies, right? We're not dependent on people. We're dependent on Jesus even to be able to love our enemies. And it's offering time. So if you want to give to this ministry, you know, to contact me. Thank you for people who have given to this ministry. We have books. You can see where your money went to. Um, and, of course, we know that it costs to do ministry. And I always go back to Luke 8 where it said the women funded Jesus' ministry. So for the people who always say that people are always asking for money, a lot of pastors are what they call bivocational, which is kind of unfortunate because really pastoring or teaching or preaching, having a role in leadership is a job. You know, just like, you know, if you clean up your house and people try to say, like, being a housewife or a house husband is not a job until they have to do it, right? And so we understand that the, uh, the pastors and preachers, teachers, whatever, they're studying, they're having to buy ink and print gas, printing, I don't know, like print gas, printing, 
and then gas in our cars and wear and tear and things and make visits and all those things. And you might say, well, that's not my responsibility. But if we're feed, we're doing it so that we feed you, right? You pay the people that get on stage. They did the same thing. They're prepping and they're putting up things so that they can present their message to you. And you're willing to pay to, to see that. You think it's worth it. They're a blessing to you, right? The actors at the movies and things like that. You, you believe that's a blessing to you. And so that's the same way with us. People tend to diminish the roles of the blessing that they receive from people who are standing up here time after time of delivering a word, but it costs us just like it costs anybody on any other stage or platform to, to give you that message um, when you're buying tickets or whatever. So please consider giving to this ministry because we, if you want to come and see us, we're going to have to get a physical location and that costs money, right? And you want to, to, to buy into that. You want to be one of the, the founding members of that building, you know, things like that. As we uh, look for the bidding, we will find ways to honor people who have honored, you know, God through us. Um, we may put, you know, we knew some people that put names on the bricks or uh, put up little plaques for people who give or whatever, you know, really. And it's not because you gave so much money, it's because you believed in what God has us doing. Does that make sense to you? Amen. Okay, so think about giving to us so that we can move forward. We believe in 2024 is probably that year we're going to move forward. And sure, God's going to bless, but he's usually going to bless through you. So consider giving to Meditating Life Center. If you want to give to me, you could just cash out me or Zell me or something. Well, it's my name. So my cash app is dollar sign capital D-A-T-I-N-A capital H-E-R-D or Detina Heard on Zell, things like that. You can Zell me or you can uh, cash out me, things like that. And just because I'm a, you feel like I've been a blessing to you, say, hey, go have dinner, go get a new robe, please. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to switch it up a little bit so that you won't get confused on the videos. Please read the titles so you can see that they are different, even if I have the same hairstyle. I don't know how many people saw uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Ghost when they showed all the mug shots where she had all the different hairstyles um, with the times she got arrested. That's, sometimes when I'm looking at my videos, and I'm going through them to try to find something to repost. I go like, wow, <laughs> you know, I shouldn't have did that. But, you know, the word is always powerful. So consider giving to us. Give to someone. It's a blessing in giving. The Bible says, give, it shall be given unto you. But we know that God gave us the air in our bodies, the place where you're living, even if it's a homeless shelter. It's a shelter, even if it's a tent. It's a tent. You know, God's. you're still breathing. You're still alive. He's still with you. He's still for you. And how do you, you know, give back in return? He gave you his son, okay, to, so that you can have the right to eternal life. He said, give, do what he says, right? Give. And give to some of the ministries that you see around you doing this hard work instead of, you know, sometimes you just want to buy into the big ministry and feel important. But they, most of the time, I'm not disparaging other big ministries or big, you know, charitable places. But I'm just saying now, most of the time they won't know who you are. But if you give locally and, and then give up your time, and help your local charity, so you can help your community and stuff, then you can see the good things that are being done with your money and with your labor uh, more than you may be able to see just from a commercial or something like that. So consider giving locally and definitely give to the ministry that you're, that's feeding you, you know, and bless your pastors and leaders and people who work hard for you, okay? Give your ushers a flower or something and say, I appreciate your beautiful smile when I come in and I had a rough time. You know, be a blessing to somebody today. Alright, you, you can't be God-giving, no matter how you try, or just as sure as you are living, and the Lord is in heaven on high, the more on giving because it's really true that you can't beat God giving no matter how you try Thank you, Pastor. Most gracious and Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for this offering. Let it be a blessing to those that we serve in this community. Thank you, Lord, for those who could give and those that couldn't give. Bless them all. In Jesus' blessed holy name we pray. Amen. Yeah, we'll to, last week I just sang the chorus. 
Oh no, Jesus Christ is the way. But how it starts off, we go, when I think about the hour, then I know what I must do. Just rest assured, time will be no more. He is coming soon, so I will open up my heart. Just help us, Lord, to, to love our enemies, to love everyone that we see, and so that we can lead them to you by our character, by our behavior, by the words from your word, and by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And that's why we call the, um, I don't see, I'm probably talking really fast, so y'all mm -hmm. need to comment by the time I'm, he's my person that tells me I'm talking too fast. Okay. So, in that song, um, that's by Tremaine Hawkins and Walter Hawkins. And so, we're, you know, we're hopeful that when we're looking at loving our enemies, it, you, you don't take it out of context, right? That you don't go like, well, someone told me to be nice to everybody even if they're evil to me and they mistreat me. But that is not what we ever are teaching, are we? Did Jesus, was Jesus nice to everybody? No, he wasn't. Was he always nice to everybody? No, he wasn't. Okay, he, he became angry. God it says, in Romans 1, it says God's wrath is on people who purposefully do things and pretend like they don't know better. Okay, so when people say God's not mad at you, I don't know where they're getting that from. Because if, if they're saying it in a way of saying, like, hey, God's not mad at you. He's not looking for a reason to punish you or harm you. And that his wrath is not for his people because his people have a heart for him. That part is true. So you don't use that for an excuse to say, like, oh, I'm so scared of a holy God and he's going to get me. Or to use that for an excuse, so I might as well just keep on doing what I'm doing, wait. Like, Sure, but I feel like that should be taught a different way. It said, God has given you everything that you need and everything that I need to live a holy life. Now live it, okay? And when you mess up, when you mess up, not you're going to mess up, when and if you mess up, he's still there. We're in a dispensation of grace and mercy. Thank God for Jesus. And Jesus advocates for us. He goes to the Father because He, God sent him here in a flesh body, okay? Even while we were God's enemies, Christ died for us. We were talking about last week in Matthew about how Judas sat right there and ate with them. And Jesus called them out numerous times. Okay, do not people get mad when you get caught, when you call them out on their mess. Okay, don't y'all stop calling people out on their mess. Now, don't do it in a dangerous way. You are some kind of person that's going to harm you physically or something like that. But you can't just keep the truth from people when you're just worried they won't be your friend or they won't like you or things like that and then watch them go to hell, you know? 
you got to get bolder and lose your fear. I call him general fear. I'm not saying it out of respect, but the, I'm saying it in a way because he's running people, right? And so some people, until, but God did not give us that spirit of fear, so we know it comes from the devil. We got a fear of God, a respect. We have a fear of danger, a lion, a real lion or something, right? But we don't have a fear of being liked and things like that. We have, if you're going to have a fear or a concern, it's for people going to hell because you didn't speak up. And Judas was right there, and Jesus said, yeah, you said it. You know, you know he caught it right on his mess, but he still let him come around. But he, he put up boundaries, y'all. When I'm talking about boundaries, something that I do want to go a little deeper with. That's the name of today's sermon is how we are how to love our enemies, and we're going a little deeper with it. He allowed him around. You didn't see Jesus running behind people. Okay, he went where he went, and people came there. Okay, he went, you know, he, and people came there unless he had an assignment, like when he went to Bethany to see about uh, Lazarus. But people called him to come and see about Lazarus, even. You understand what I'm saying? When he went to the dinner, he ended up telling people off at the dinner when one guy was trying to take up for the other guy, and Jesus started really going off on them. They the ones had asked him to come over there. Have you ever felt like that? You asked me to come over here. Don't you go come over here. I'm going to come over here and it's going to be a bunch of foolishness. Then I'm probably going to say something or I'm going to leave. And if I just leave, then y'all going to be trying to say it's me. But it's not me. It's your foolishness. So sometimes you do just leave, right? We read that scripture a few weeks ago or a few, uh, where it says to shake the dust and go on back to business when people mistreat you. In a place that you gone, you have gone to give them a blessing. It's the same principle, right? We're learning the principles of the gospel. Uh, but sometimes you have to say something and go like, y'all need to quit this foolishness, okay? Because I'm not going to put up with that. So, you know, and then you'll find out who's your friends and who's your enemies when you're telling truth. And it, and it doesn't mean somebody's your enemy just because you they don't like you telling the truth or they try to correct us and stuff. So today, I looked up um, the, the definition of enemies for us so we could know the difference. And the definition of enemy is a person or a people who are actively, they're actively engaging or ready to engage and physically, emotionally, or spiritually, energetic action, our pursuits, our active hostilities. They don't mean no good towards you. And sometimes you got to be careful because it's very hard to define until you're mature and strong enough to let people go. Honest to goodness, that you're not trying to be liked or be popular. Or you, like me, I'm, I mean, these things I'm saying, I've lived them. So it's not like, you go, of course you're saying that you're a preacher. No, hun. I've already been through the same kind of things. I went by titles and, and with the expectation of how to be treated. But those are just people. So you have every right to not be disrespected or to be treated cruelly. And I do not think anybody should be in leadership that treats people cruelly. If you don't like people, why are you even working to be the head of people? If you do not like sheep, why do you want to be a shepherd? You need to. Con I feel like those people should examine themselves to see if they really are uh, in the right position. Because some people are doing it to get self-worth. I think we talked about it last week when someone says, I'm a Christian, and everybody goes, oh, wow, and starts giving you automatic respect. Or someone says, I'm a pastor or a leader, or, you know, all these other titles that have military titles and all these things like this. And people, you know, go like, wow, you know, or political titles. And everybody goes, wow. But that does not mean they have good character. I have all this education, excuse me, education. And then, you know, and people go, wow. But that doesn't mean they have good character. And believe me, when I tell you that God only blesses us with that kind of gifting and, excuse me, that kind of accomplishment to serve him. Every single thing that people accomplish is to, for the service of God. So if they're mistreating people or taking advantage of people or doing things out of pride so people worship them instead of God, y'all need to run. Okay, I call them on their mess in a kind way. It says with gentleness and humbleness to say like, you know, uh-uh, okay? And so these people are actively doing things against you. Uh, and it says hostile means they're unfriendly or aggressive or antagonistic uh, to someone or something. It's a person who feels hatred. And you can go back and look at my sermon on hatred. It really nuances hatred. It really talks about how people may have feelings in their heart, okay, that we are not being honest about. And a lot of times that hatred has absolutely nothing to do with the person that they're acting out on. I mean... I was talking to Brother Tom one day, you know, and people tend to feel inadequate if they have less education and feel bloated with pride if they have more education. But education just means that you have the ability to learn and you have learned certain things, so you have become educated. Okay, the textbooks that people read on up to whatever level of education they have, most of those same textbooks are online. The only difference, I saw in The Wizard, don't I? That's why I told Tom, 
I said, it's not the Wizard of Oz. It's like, you already had it. It's just you have a piece of paper that said you learned it, right? So some of us, you know, I, I am a college graduate, but some of us are anointed. And school will tell you that. Even seminary will tell you that. That anointing outranks school any day. So if you're, you're blessed and gifted to teach, you'll be, be a better teacher as long as you, what, study than some people who have, what, a piece of paper. So, so a lot of stuff is available to you to read it for yourself and study and learn it for yourself. You never have to feel inadequate, okay? And so it says these people are hostile. They're unfriendly, aggressive, and antagonistic to someone or something. A person who feels hatred for fosters harmful designs against or engages in antagonistic which antagonistic means showing dislike, opposition, or being opposed to somebody, struggles or plots against somebody, or competes in an unfriendly way with somebody. So it doesn't mean like y'all racing and you're like, see, you're full of hate because <laughs> you try to beat me at the race or we're playing competitive sports. But I'm going back to the lesson on hate. It's like people just find reasons and ways to just find differences between people and to make people feel inadequate. Okay, so just be careful that you that you don't have that hatred deep down inside of yourself that you're not acknowledging, and then you're seeking other ways to one up other people when everything you do is supposed to be for Christ. Okay, and it's available for other people to do it if that's something for them to do. But it's not for us to be unfairly competing against people, hating on people, doing things against each other, and things like that. So that's how you can tell somebody is your enemy. They're opposed to you. They're antagonistic to you. They're aggressive towards you. They plot on you. They're ready to harm you. Okay, they're, hurt. they're ready. They're purposefully wanting to hurt your feelings. They're unfriendly. It goes on up to say that you're, that's an adversary. Where do we hear adversary? Who they talk? Who do they talk about in the Bible being our adversary, brother Tom? The devil. The devil. No, it's in that movie. A friend of mine said, I think it's in that movie, The Water Boy or something. She used to say it all the time. She thinks it's funny. So it's like uh, the devil. It's not funny at all. Uh, one's opponent in a contest, conflict, or dispute. Because who? How many people know that we're in a war? Okay, so when you have enemies of war. We're in a war, we're in a spiritual war, a battle between good and evil. And so you have enemies, okay? You have people who are, are working and says, look at the, uh, Satan's followers, and no wonder he masquerades as an angel of light. So look at his people, they masquerade. They, they use these titles, y'all, and then they try to infiltrate your life. Now, that's not to say that all of us haven't hurt somebody else's feelings or did something that is wrong towards people, right? And, and uh, people, so people say that we're their, their enemy because of what we've done. But the difference is in being a Christian, we're supposed to be sorry for it if we purposefully do wrong. And again, that's not account. That's not when you're holding someone accountable, like with the laws of the land, or they've done something to you. But the scriptures we're going to read is going to tell us what our response should be. And sometimes it, it's going to be good to know who your enemies are because it'll help you mature. Like when you're in a time of trouble, if you had a dime, who could you call? And when you look back on this person that says, no, I'm not going to even do anything to lift a finger to help you, you can look back and think of all the times when that happened and realize they're not your friend. And sometimes people are not, they're just not your friend, right? They don't even have to be your enemy because what do we read about enemies? They're actively engaged in trying to harm you. And sometimes when you're immature, you don't recognize it. You just, I mean, I've seen people take up for people who have done very harmful things to people, haven't you? That's why they talk about abuse, right? And you can be, have the victim syndrome, you know, where you just really, uh, you know, the Stockholm syndrome, where you just feel like that, you know, you just love them, you can't live without them. You know, you've been groomed and stuff, and people just, um, or you have damage from your childhood or these other issues. So we go to counseling, we go to Christian counseling, we pray, we read the word, we apply it to our lives so we become a whole person, and then we do self-examination so we can see how far we've come so we don't give up, right? Um, you reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up, all right? And things like that. So I just wanted to be clear about that, that not everybody is your enemy just because you don't agree with them and they don't agree with you, but you should recognize your enemy because they're actively engaged against you. Number one, the devil, okay? Wanting you to be lost, wanting your life to be miserable, uh, taking advantage of our weaknesses, you know, and our shortcomings and our immaturity and our fleshly desires to lead us in the wrong direction. And he has people that work for him. I call them devil's kids, just like we're God's children. You got devil's kids, you got imps, and you got uh, demons, fallen angels that are, you know, 
you know, not sitting on your shoulder, but those kind of thoughts that come against knowledge of God. So we're supposed to, what? Take them captive and cast them down as soon as they start entering our head. And a good way to think about it is like when you talk to your kids. You know, what were you thinking? <laughs> is that what y'all saying? What were you thinking? I don't know what you was thinking, <laughs> okay? What, did I tell you something different? So that's you know, kind of God as a parent, right? So not necessarily being enemies, but, you know, that's not being friends. Okay, because the enemy is is hostile towards you, doing things to harm you, and it's not just physical; it's emotional and it's spiritual, helping you to be lost, do sins against, commit sins against God, to commit crimes. Like we keep talking about these real crime shows, uh, pay attention. It's not just whoa, look at what they did. It's like no, look at why they did that. Why are you doing going to prison for someone else? Why are you helping cover up for someone else? Why are you helping someone else sin? All right, why are you sinning? And another thing I wanted to go over really briefly is. I, you know, the Lord is really putting it on my mind about people who keep preaching sermons and preach whatever God tells you to preach. I, you know, I can't judge it. I understand. But a lot of people keep preaching to the victim, but not to the sinner and the victimizer. Okay? But we need to be preaching to the victimizer. Stop it. Stop committing crimes against people. Stop committing adultery against people. Stop coveting people's stuff. Stop lying on people. Put God first. Where am I getting that from, Brother Tom? Them Ten Commandments you just yeah, read. Yeah. Okay, stop. We need to preach to the sinner. Stop it, okay? And, and teach the Christian, you know, what we do instead. Amen. Just tell them to stop it. Don't go, hey, y'all need to get over it. People's going to do this. No, stop doing it. Yeah. All right? And so, another thing that I put down is, yes, we have an adversary, but we love and do good with boundaries and accountability. In the same way God loved and loves us. What Jesus taught in the word and by his example. And then God's going to judge. Because there's laws of the land. You use wisdom and discernment in re setting relational boundaries. How close you let somebody to you uh, by getting to know people, right? And being honest of, in your assessment of who's good to be around and how much time you should be allocating with people and how close we should be getting with people. Because darkness and light just ain't going to be able to be together. Okay? And your loving kindness in spite of someone else's faults may win them to Christ by our example. Just guard your heart and your pearls so that the swine don't trample on them and then turn on you and destroy you. And that's my context. We're going to go to Romans 12 and then we're going to end because um, I think we already went over uh, Matthew 25 from last week where we talked about um, where he was talking about the servant and then he was talking about how did we go on this? He said, oh, when he did feed people. And I, and I wanted to go, that's another reason why I wanted to go in context because it says, when you didn't feed a brother or a sister in Matthew 25 and 26, it was talking about brothers and sisters and stuff like that. And I know some people probably said, well, gosh, you know, it said, when you didn't feed your brother and your sister, then you, did, you um, didn't feed men. But I wanted to go to Romans 12 for that reason because when Jesus was saying, like, you know, don't, um, to do. I mean, we were talking about in our Galatians when it says do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. So some of our scriptures that we were reading was saying like when you didn't feed a brother or sister or when you saw a brother or sister in need. In the Matthew 5 we read last week, it said if someone asks you for something, give it to them. If someone wants to borrow something from you, do not turn away. And that's when Jesus said if, uh, uh, you've been taught to love your, in your neighbor and hate your enemies, but I tell you this to love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, and it's being like God who loved us when we were his enemies. And so I brought in Romans 12 so that um, we understand that that's for everybody. I and mean, I want Brother Tom to read the verses I asked him to read, and then we're going to end. 14 through 21. Bless them that persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice of them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own con concepts. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lit in you, Live peaceable with all men. Dear beloved, avenge not yourselves, 
but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay, so that's something I want to... So remember today, that when I said context, context is boundary setting and accountability. Let's not go out of the window. We talk out our differences. We don't go killing people and beating up people and hating on people. Do not pay, repay evil with evil. But he didn't say don't... He didn't say you couldn't do anything. And that's what I really wanted to talk about You know, and end with today. The Bible never tells you you have to be victimized. He says, hey, when somebody does something to you, go talk to them. If they won't listen to you, go bring other people. Sometimes that's the law. Sometimes another family member. You know, People tend to say, see, yes, you always go tell everybody. Use discretion. Use wisdom on how to handle it. But I'm telling you, there are tools there in place, in the Bible, in the world even, for us to be able to talk out differences without having hatred. Because love is simply... Wanting the best for someone. Sometimes jail is going to be the best for people. Sometimes a butt spanking might be best for people. Sometimes going to your room, I'm, I need to calm down. Sometimes it's spending time away from each other. You know, God forbid, sometimes it's a divorce. You know, it's sexual immorality or abuse. You know, let God be your guide, okay, on what your um, avenues of getting away from your, you know, putting boundaries with, your, with people who are actively hostile towards you or towards the cause of Christ. That's your enemy. Anybody who goes against God, Jesus said, my brothers and sisters are the ones who do the will of my Father. Amen. And that's our goal in loving our enemies is to teach them to do the will of our Father. To not come in our house with a bunch of mess. Our house belongs to the Lord. He blessed us with this house. He blessed us with this house. He is in us. He is with us. We are for him. We made a promise and an oath and a goal of being Christ-like. Okay, so we love you, but you're not going to do that here. That's not allowed. You don't bring nobody else's husband in here. Don't bring nobody else's wife in here. Don't be wanting what belongs to other people. Do not be killing people. Do not tell lies on people. Love God more than anything. I tell you, it'll be a blessing. See, those commandments, they really fit into your everyday life and conversation. I might start to have Brother Tom read them almost every time because if you apply them, then it would teach you how to love. Okay, and that's what Jesus said, is love covers the whole darn thing. It covers the whole law. Because if you love God more than anything, and you love people, then you would not do unfair things to them. And you would be able to see, like, you know, we'd be able to see the, in the areas where we have fallen short, and who have we used to be, okay, and then we can see that in people. And I'm going to tell you this precaution, because it says, like, if people uh, mistreat you, bless them. You know, it, it, it makes your enemies angry when you're still the same person when they're trying to bring you down. Remember, that's the goal of your adversary, okay, is to try to change you into somebody that's low. So don't go low. Go high, like Michelle Obama said. And then work towards unity and harmony. Don't, hit, don't retaliate with evil. And I like to say how God said, revenge is mine. I'm going to repay it. He promises to repay it. Sometimes we'll cry and say, God, how you how do you allow this? You know, and in the end times it says the, the blood of the martyrs is gonna cry out from the ground and say, When? When are you gonna avenge this? But God promises in this scripture that Brother Tom just read, he said, Don't don't you worry about doing harm to people that do harm, you know, things to you. And he didn't say don't do don't Go to the law if it's a legal issue. He didn't say you need to separate. Doesn't the Bible say come out from amongst them? What what does darkness and light have in common? Doesn't he say talk it out? If you can't talk it out, what's he say? Separate yourself from them. Don't ever give anybody your heart. I don't care who they are. That doesn't deserve more than what you owe to them, which is hope to do good. You know, say I'm, I want good for you. What is it I can do so that you can do good? So that we can get along. Maybe it's to not be around each other so much. Okay? And so we're going to end with, um, I think I've got everything in there. Um, with So I wanted to do context. We're going to end with some Martin Luther King verses um, that I have on here. And one of them, I don't even think I'm going to be having to read them. It was something he was saying this morning. It's like people couldn't even be able to, to rest until they have justice and they're treated fairly. And he was saying, it was the I Have a Dream speech, and he was saying that, People would be learning how to get along, and that. And here it says, if we are to have peace, our loyalties must be ecumenical rather than sectionally 
Our abilities must transcend our race, tribe, class, our nation. And this means we must develop a world perspective. That means to be able to see things like they really are. Jesus said something about learn how to, to work the world like the unsaved people learn how to work the world. What's some of yours say, Brother Tom? Um, we're determined here in Montgomery to work and fight until justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. So, and we're looking at the King Holiday and we're looking at how to love our enemies. And he's talking to people who have done harm, isn't he? He's talking about people who on purpose are adversarial towards other people. And yet he's talking about a way that you can learn how to get along. He's saying you need to learn how to treat people correctly. You know, he didn't just talk to the victims. He talked to the victimizers, okay? And he said to them, like, this is, you, you have to acknowledge that what you have done and the way that you're doing things are, are wrong in the eyes of God and man and that you got to do it better. But he didn't go hang up under his victimizers. He didn't hang up under the, the evildoers. He didn't take the side of the evildoers, but he loved everybody. And so if you think of anything this King Holiday, remember, that's how we love our enemies. It's the way that Jesus loved us, to remind them of what God has said, to call them on their mess when it's appropriate, to learn how to shake the dust off your feet, to learn how to put up boundaries, to learn that correction does not mean that somebody is your enemy, but that, that they would be adversarial towards you, even if you like them. They don't like you. They don't love you. They're not capable of it. If they're abusive towards you, if they're trying to get you to do what's wrong, they're your enemies. So you can still love them, but we have to get strong enough, church, to let people go. To go, you know, I believe a day is coming when church is going to start putting people out again. Honest to God, they're going to say, hey, you either need to be counseled. You cannot be sleeping with the congregation. Unfortunately, it's some of that stuff coming out of pulpits. They are the ones sleeping with the congregation. They are the ones telling the lies. They are the ones mistreating people. Okay, unfortunately, get out of there. Okay, get out of there. You can try talking to them. Maybe God put you there for that reason. If you can't, get out of there. Read your Bible and tell you to get out of there. Okay, go somewhere where you can you can talk and be lived today. You learn, um, you agree, and you've heard something that Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart, and you're saying, hey, I accept your offer, God. Um, I want Jesus to come into my life and be my Savior. I give you my life. I know you died on the third day for every last one of my sins and that you rose and that you are seated on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me. And so, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I give you my life. And if you made that confession of faith today, and you really meant that, then congratulations, you're in the family. And we love you. Hey, there's we have flaws. We have things that need to be worked on. But I tell you, the Bible tells you you're supposed to be able to talk to us about it. Go to a place where you can talk to somebody, where they don't get offended just because you talk to them and ask questions. Uh, a person should be confident if God called them. They don't have to be arrogant or prideful. You can ask us questions. You, if we make error, you know, I know I talk fast, y'all. Um, I think it's my thing that's going to make me stand out because, you know, God gave everybody something. And I guess it's, that lady talk fast, but she tell you the truth, okay? And I'm telling you that life with Christ is going to be better because you're going to get the Holy Ghost. I cannot even recognize myself from just a few days ago, let alone a few years ago, when people try to do stuff and those fiery darts come flying and I just go like, I'm just disappointed, not so hurt, even though it's kind of hurtful. It's just disappointed because you just want more for people. So don't give up, you know, you reap a harvest of blessing if you just don't give up. Keep on doing good. Uh, go to a find a ministry near you so that you can serve and be baptized. Tell them that you've made your confession. Um, and then let us know, you know, that you made your confession of faith. Keep on following us on Facebook and uh, YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. I'll try to slow down some of these days when I'm getting kind of fussed at that, you know, you, you see you scheduled all these Take things. Your time. You scheduled all these things and then here you go. But he's, then he comes down and goes like, let the spirit have his way. <laughs> I know that y'all preachers always say it's going to be short. But welcome to the family. And hey, just love your enemies. Hey, when somebody, you're going to get to the point, I promise you, that when people say some crazy stuff to you, you're just going to be looking at them. I got this look, y'all. I just look at you because I just listen. Sometimes I think it's how Jesus did. He just listened to some stuff people said. And then sometimes, though, he'd be like, hey, y'all like unwashed too. You look good on the outside, but maybe the stuff that's really inside of you, you need to be working on that mess. Because I ain't no, I, you, you got to face God one day. When I come back, it's going to be judgment. And I want you to get it right. And that's all anybody wants, to, don't they? They just want people to get it right. But you don't have to be victimized. So when we say love your enemies, love them like Jesus loved them uh, and gave up his life for them. Uh, stood, you know, 
step, you know, stepped over and let his enemies even be around, but he didn't follow them. He didn't copy them. And for lack of a better word, he did not kiss their behinds. Even if they were more popular, remember they were the leaders. He did not go worship them. But he stayed on task for what God had him to do, and he stayed who he was in Christ. And that's what I'm telling you. Stay who you are in Christ. You continue to grow in Christ, and you will be able to love even your enemy. So join us next week on Meditating the Life Center Ministries. And if I said anything that's confusing to you, please, that's what the pages are for, right? Contact me and let's talk about it. And again, I'll try to slow down next time. Stay blessed.